Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to talk about how to get rid of Aptasia with Bergia nudibranchs. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now if you guys have been in this hobby long enough, you've undoubtedly come across Aptasia. The little glass anemones can be a bit of a pest because they can take over tanks, they can start, start popping up everywhere and there's a lot of methods I've seen in the past where people try and zap them with those little Mohano ones or you know poke them, scrape them off and a lot of these methods actually just cause it to spread out and cause more in your tank. Now the last few months one of the things that I've been doing is super gluing them. So I would basically just, so it can't spread, right? So you take your super glue and basically just cover it and build a little super glue tomb. And that has been working pretty well. However, it doesn't always work. Um, on the Zoas, usually you're sacrificing a few heads of Zoas, not ideal. And there's once in a while, like there's one inside my clan that I tried super gluing over and it's found a little tiny crack and somehow squeezed through and out again. So I recently ordered some Bergia. Now these are really cool little nudibranchs and their main diet, their only diet is Aptasia. So we're gonna use them to take out some Aptasia in this tank. Now we're gonna attack with a bit of a two-pronged approach. The stuff on frag plugs are easy to pop out. And there's other ones in the tank which are attached to a rock or somewhere not so easy to remove. For this, I use a little five gallon spec V tank I had kicking around and I've been putting the frags in it. Um, now this is kind of a two-pronged approach, partially because I wanna try and breed little guys so it's good to have them in their own system. And I also do have a lot of wrasses in my main tank. So if I was to throw them all in, there is a risk that a good chunk of them may be picked off by the wrasses. So this way I can take all the infected frags, put them in this little tank and let the nudies go to work. Now it is actually pretty amazing how fast they clean it. Um, this little time lapse was over about five hours. So I put them in and it took a little while for them to figure it out. But once they figured it out, they just started going to town on it. Um, now I've also heard that these guys only come out and feed at night. Um, that might be true in a tank full of fish where there's more predators, but at least in this little kind of nudie tank that I set up, um, they've been they've been out constantly. Like this is second time lapse I'll show you guys was right in the middle of the day, you know, light over the tank just for filming. And one of the little guys came up to it, he started kind of checking it out, he kind of left. And there's a few of them just kind of sat around the base for a while. It's like they're having like a little meeting, working out their game plan. And then they started going for the Aptasia. Now one crazy thing to see is you can actually watch the Aptasia kind of receding or kind of retreating from the nudies and then a bunch more come in and just kind of help take out the guy. So it's pretty crazy, but you can see how much of ferocious eaters these guys are. Little nudibranchs are super cool and it is amazing how fast they can devour Aptasia. There's obviously other options as well, like you can get a file fish, you can get a peppermint shrimp. Um, one of the issues with peppermint shrimp is sometimes if they're hungry, they'll go after LPS. As you can see, I got tons of like torches and acans and micromesis. So those guys, I definitely don't want them being touched. So I'm kind of avoiding the peppermint shrimp route. So decided to go with the nudibranchs and I am amazed at how fast they devour Aptasia. Now the one strong consideration is that they only eat Aptasia. So it's good for clearing infestation, but once you run out, there goes their food source and they're probably gonna die off. So it's good to find another local hobbyist if you know someone else that has lots of Aptasia, or you can start trying to breed your own. Now I set up this little jar on the left as a bit of an experiment. So um, I took a couple Aptasia and I kinda razored off the big heads in them and tried to hopefully get them to split and spore, little spores all over the tank. And so it's just a little air bubbler, some salt water, added a little bit of aminos, and I can add a little bit of like a reef or some kind of particulate food later. On the bottom, I just have a bunch of frag plugs, just give it lots of surfaces to attach to, and as well as some egg crates. So hopefully if this works out, then I can get lots of them to kind of breed and spawn in there, then I can just pop one out every other day and kind of feed the nudibranchs and keep them going in the long term. Um, I do have a buddy that's gonna bring me a rock full of Aptasia, so I'm gonna see if I can add that to the jar later and hopefully kind of keep things rolling that way. So as long as you can find a way to keep feeding these guys long term, it's an amazing little kind of tool of a creature to have in your arsenal to rid that pest Aptasia. Oh, as always guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.